John Stoll. Tim Lurch. We're here again in Tim's home studio. That's right. We're back again for some more uh, explorations. Today the theme is going to be contrapuntal. How do I want to say this? That sounds about right. Contrapuntal improvisation. Counterpoint improvisation. Whichever one you like. What I thought would be fun to do, and we'll see where it goes because we don't have a big plan, is uh, what we just did was a kind of natural thing for John and I. Uh, we don't have a, a lot of intellectual rules about it. We just play and listen. Would you, do you agree? I would agree. I yeah. mean, basically, you and I have done enough of this kind of playing with others and together to know the importance of space yes. and learning how to breathe on the guitar, which we have both been working on for quite a while, yeah. and, some, and together now for a while, yes. too. And I'd tell students, maybe you do too, singers and horn players give us a sense of how to breathe on the guitar, and that allows the conversation to unfold, which is what we tried to demonstrate just now on uh, those okay. courses of all the things. Very good. And of course, we're both aware of the harmony to a, a, a great extent, um, but there's a kind of Bach-like quality if we do something closer to the chords. Absolutely. Chord tones are essential um, for hearing yes, melodies. Yes, absolutely. And for me, the song's always going on in my head. Me if too. you listen closely, you hear that little melody. I thought what we would do today is break it down a little bit, just maybe even so that we can find, find out what's going on. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start the song, and each of us are just going to trade two bars each. At That's going to be challenging, two It'll bars each. It'll be interesting. But we can yeah. try. And one of the things I'm going to try and do is Wherever John goes, I'm going to try and follow his lead, and, and we'll sort of see if we can sound uh, l not exactly like two guys with two different ideas, but, mm -hmm. but just the, get the, the trajectory of the line. To, so picking up on each other's threads, so they feel like yeah. there's an ongoing narrative, right, which will be right. challenging with two-bar phrases, but Let's try. I'm up for it if you are. Okay. <laughs> two, one, two, three. <laughs> I 
I'm right there, we're at the top. <laughs> that hung together fairly well. That is challenging to do, too. It is, it is. Could you follow along, guys? We hope you can. Now, we lined it up pretty well. Yeah. Some spots it wasn't where we my, I don't think it was my uh, brightest moment. But well, I me think either. <laughs> but that could, I mean, sometimes Mick Goodrick talks about this, creating a little box for yourself with maybe a, a set of constraints that are not realistically what you'd expect to do in a gig. You can learn something. Yes, yes. Speaking of learning something, let's do one bar now. One bar. Wow. Yes. Yeah, let's see what we can do. It. All right. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Mostly one bar each, uh, mostly. I, I was interrupting yeah. you a lot because I um, wanted to sort of blur the lines a little which bit. Which is okay. Um, I, yeah, we was, is that something was we do on a gig? Probably not, but as a little exercise, right. why not? I mean, if you, if you can say something that has some melodic and rhythmic interest in a one bar phrase. Bill, Bill played one sometimes, Bill Evans. They would mm -hmm. do ones. Mm -hmm. And then that's challenging. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Okay, so now come to the point where we can really think of contrapuntal ideas mm -hmm. because we're going to both play. And what I want to try and do is see uh, from a very sort of simple side of things, I'm going to try and really audit myself or edit myself both uh, to play a, a really essential line kind mm -hmm. of around the chords. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe what we can do is for the first time we do it, no rules, okay. no preconceived rules. For we'll a full chorus. For the whole chorus. Okay. We'll just play together, both guys, playing. You can do whatever you feel like. Do whatever you feel is, is going to make the music Hopefully happen. Hopefully to serve our conversation. Yes. And then you One, two, three, four. <laughs> So some things that we did that might be worth pointing out to folks listening. Uh, legato versus staccato. So maybe if one is doing a particular approach to the uh, decay of the note, the other might either join in or do something that deliberately contrasts. Mm -hmm. High versus low, as we said maybe before we started filming. So if you're going mm -hmm. high, I'll go low and vice mm -hmm. versa. Uh, maybe one of us will play syncopation that suggests a slightly different response, but still a syncopation mm -hmm. from the other. So it's just basically without copying sort of trading and being in the same little space for a second and then moving, mm -hmm. and one of us will then suggest another direction. Yeah, I felt myself slipping into a kind of three against four thing yep, in a yep. while there. And, and I also noticed that there was a patch where you were mostly just playing chordal ideas, but yep. I was trying to respect the melodic content of yep. those chordal ideas. Yeah. So um, what I'd like to do now is suggest that we both play melody. Mm -hmm. No comping. Okay, no, no chords. No okay. uh, chordal no um, chords. Punctuations. All, all single notes, essentially. Right. All right. And um, flip a coin, heads or tails? Mm -hmm. Yes, heads. Okay, you win. <laughs> so you get to pick high or low. So we're restricting ourselves to a specific way. Yeah, you and I did this before, general. actually. We've done yeah. this before with, yeah. the, with you two acoustic right, guitars, right. which was fun. Um, 
I'll go low. Okay, okay. And that's that's in in, <laughs> in keeping with our character and our usual status. Yeah. yeah. Although one time you made me go high. Yes. Remember that? And <laughs> I just started it on your guitar, yeah. which I could barely play. But it's a beautiful old Gibson, and I played something that sort yes, of worked. Okay, so this that's time fine. John's gonna stay in the lower register, mm -hmm. and that's very general. Doesn't mean you have to be only on yeah. the bottom two yeah, strings. Yeah. Go where but, the melodies but, take you. But typically and, lower. And I'll be up in the higher okay. register, and we'll just see it, what kind of of expansiveness we can create with the two instruments. So remember, only melody. No one's going to punish okay. you if you play the occasional okay. chord or whatever. And right? I'll, I'll stick to singing those primarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All okay. Right. Count one. Us in. one, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> going to stay high and you're going to stay low. Mm -hmm. um, let's try that again. Yeah, but it might be fun for folks to compare what we just yeah. did with another yeah. version of it. So this idea of creating little boxes for yourself, even as a practice tool, can be useful. Yes, All right, I here we go. so. Count us in, Maestro. One, two, one, two, switch we can yeah let's, let's switch let's switch you call the tempo this time okay. feel free to uh, that, that, i like that i like oh, that okay. tempo okay. yeah okay, good want to count us in yep one a two a one two three four <laughs> Thank you. 
pretty well. What do you think? That was very nice, very nice. So these little boxes can be useful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in general, obviously, we're not making these rules when we're playing together we're in the moment. But to restrict yourself in a very specific way as, as a learning tool or just as an exercise is useful. I also think that even in a performance, uh, it usually isn't no holds barred, anything goes. We're always uh, making room for each other and listening and complimenting and and um, it's interesting how my mindset when I was the high, the high guy mm -hmm. was flowing melody mm -hmm. and I took sort of I took it for granted maybe or I just responded to the fact that you as the low guy were playing more fundamentally in some mm -hmm. ways mm -hmm. and then when I switched to the low guy I found mm -hmm. myself really wanting to just play more fundamental stuff mm -hmm. you know, roots and thirds and fifths yeah. and it just to maybe trying to make a melody with the particular register maybe cut creates a mindset perhaps exactly I think that that um, I was pushing against it every once mm -hmm. in a while just because yeah. that's who I am but I think that generally speaking I we do agree from our life of experience that the, the, the lower you are, the slower you are. Perhaps. And, you know. <laughs> Should we try a little experiment? Yes. One more time, but yes. this time you can be more active as an improviser in the in lower the low register, register, and I'll think like a bass in the upper register. Oh, isn't that interesting? Okay, Should cool. we try? Yes, yes. Count us in. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> course with just kind of what we're Everywhere, hearing and feeling. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. So guys, these, this idea of creating these little uh, set of limitations, which you wouldn't necessarily do in a solo, although you may start with a set of limitations and then expand outward from it. So sometimes deciding to start from a very small place harmonically and rhythmically, rhythmically in your solo, Sonny Rollins and Jim Hall were both masters mm -hmm, of this. Mm -hmm. And then when they played together, you could hear it. So, you know, creating rules that wouldn't necessarily be there in a playing situation can be a useful practice tool. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah? Yes. And just in closing, I'd just like to say how much I enjoyed that, first of all. And Me too. It's interesting to be fed in real time ideas uh, in response to what somebody else is playing, whether they be motifs or 
or uh, rhythms or anything that sparks your imagination. It's very rich for me and I think we can get hung up on worrying about staying out of the way or making the changes or whatever. And, and on the other side of that, if you ever, if you do it enough, you get to the other side of that where you have this sort of unbridled freedom that you realize each of us are able to respond to whatever the other one does. Yeah. Even if it means we go to a new key or yeah. to anywhere else, yeah. you yeah. know, you just say, okay, I trust John and John trusts me. We can go where we want to yeah, go. Yeah, the more of this, I would argue that um, this takes some practice. Again, you and I have the advantage yes. of some history as, as well as some shared sensibility, so it makes it easier to play together. What I would suggest was for anyone who's listening is to try this with a friend. It could yeah, be two absolutely. guitars or it could be piano or yeah. saxophone or, or bass. Or guitar and voice. Absolutely. Okay. I didn't know you could blow like that. That's actually pretty nice. The next gig we do, you should do some of that.